for me, I'm really big on sustainability. That's one of the reasons why I love renting out my clothes. Everything, like you said, has always had a hint of fashion along the way, which for me is great because like I say, I absolutely love clothes. If I could like meet my younger self, I would encourage her to just kind of be herself and just wear what she wants. Welcome to Off The Hanger, the fashion podcast where we delve deep into our guests' wardrobes, finding out their favourite fashion pieces and the stories behind them. This week's guest is entrepreneur Lisa Maynard Atten. With her background in fashion, we had a fabulous chat about her love of dresses, renting out her wardrobe and a really interesting take on sustainability. I hope you enjoy this episode. Lisa, thank you so much for joining me on Off The Hanger. It's very lovely to chat to you in your glorious pink background. We've gone for the block colour theme this morning. Yes, yes. Well, pink is my favourite colour, so, and it's also my brand colour, so it kind of makes sense to have, like, a pink wall. But this isn't intentional. This whole room is actually pink. I think people think I've done this in, on purpose, but actually when we, we decorated this room years ago, this is the colour, and the sofa is the same colour as well, which you can't see. But, yeah, it's, it's actually, the room is actually this colour, so I haven't done this on purpose. Nervous. It's just happened to be, you know, the same colour as my brand. So it works perfectly. <laughs> oh, you should just be saying, you're like, no, I am that intentional about my business. This is what <laughs> I have done. I'm totally here for it. Um, now, you have done all sorts of things throughout your yeah. career. It really, really varied, but always with a kind of little hint of fashion running through there, which I love. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey? Oh, gosh. So, um. I, I started working at 16, so I am 46 now. So I've been going for like 30 years. And when I first started, I've always been into the more the creative side. My, my sister's a scientist, I'm a, more of a creative. Um, so when I first started at 16, um, I was training to be a graphic designer. I studied graphic design at university. I went to Manchester Metropolitan University. I worked as a graphic designer for years, but I'd always had an interest in fashion. And then in my 20s, uh, kind of mid 20s, I kind of had a go at fashion styling and quickly realized that it was not for me. As much as I love clothes, I love dressing myself. Dressing other people is an entirely different beast. So I kind of moved away from that. And then from there, well, I actually got into social media. And the, the way I got into social media was when I started my own kind of business as a stylist, I needed a way to promote myself that was cost effective, AKA free. Um, so I set up a Twitter account and a, a Facebook group, which was, feels like a hundred years ago, because Instagram, TikTok didn't exist exist and I just started promoting myself through these channels and what I found was um I was getting more interest in um get, people wanting advice from me in terms of social media than actual styling which worked quite well for me because like I said I wasn't the best stylist in the world I wasn't as good at it as I thought I would be um and that kind of led me to moving to London in about 2010 yeah 2010 and I started working for Harrods as their social media manager. I worked there for seven and a half years. And part of that job um, was I really got to immerse myself in fashion, which was just the best thing ever. I got to attend all the fashion week. So I went to New York, I went to Paris, I went to Milan. So I go do ready to wear, I do couture week. So for you know a fashion girlie like me, it was just the dream. Um, so I did that for seven and a half years. And then I left London in 2017, end of 2017, moved back to Manchester and kind of still kept my, kept up my interest in fashion, but did a few other things. And then it all kind of came full circle again about, it was actually during lockdown. So the early part of lockdown, I was re I came across an article that was talking about fashion rentals and the financial and environmental benefits. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I'd want to rent out my clothes. Like I'm really like attached to my dresses and my shoes. And um, I thought, but I had so, I had so much stuff. Honestly, Emma, if you saw my spare bedroom, I could literally open a shop with the amount of stuff I've got. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna give it a go. I tried with one, uh, like, um, you know, the sequin Rixo dresses from a few years ago. So I started with that. Um, and as we started to come out of lockdown, I started to get a few requests. And then before I knew it, the requests started to snowball to the point where I was having to turn them down because I didn't have enough clothes. I, I, I didn't, I only have one of each item. If I had several, it would have been great, but I didn't. And then I decided to upload more of my wardrobe. So then now I have about 20 pieces that I uh, rent out and it's kind of just gone from there, to be honest. It's kind of, yeah, it went from this tiny little side hustle that I just just testing out to this kind of full blown thing. Um, I've developed a course around it for anybody who might want to be 
be thinking about renting their clothes. Um, I've done quite a bit of press around it. Um, I'm writing a book about how fashion has helped me with my finances. Um, aside from that, I kind of do other things as well. I sit on a number of boards. I'm really passionate about, you know, empowerment of women and women in business. Um, and yeah, so, but everything, like you said, has always had a hint of fashion along the way, which for me is great because like I say, I absolutely love clothes. So yeah, works perfectly for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So did you get though, the most important question here is, did you get good staff discount at Harrods? Yeah, oh, I, that is the one. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, it, it hurts my soul now I no longer have discount you know and I have to pay I remember I bought not long after I left Harrods and I was back in Manchester I bought you know the remember the Gucci trainers with the B on the side well yes. I bought the, the B in Manchester and you know all of that and I paid I had to pay full price and I'd forgotten that I didn't work there anymore so I was just expected to get a discount and then she said the price I was like oh 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 yeah of course <laughs> oh so sad that was a sad that was a sad day that was a very sad day <laughs> <laughs> the death of the discount yes now as somebody who is a creative did you love fashion as a child was that something that you used as a creative outlet oh yeah so my my love of fashion came from my parents in particular my mom so I was born in Leeds uh, many many years ago <laughs> and then when I was about a year old my parents left this country to go traveling because my dad worked for various different companies and the first place we settled on our kind of global journey was New York and New York in the 80s was just a hive of fashion you had Ralph Lauren you had uh, Calvin Klein you had Donna Karen you know you had all the, the shoulder pads and the power suits and my mom was just obsessed and uh, my dad was really into fashion as well but in a slightly different way so on the one hand he would wear like te white t-shirts and Levi jeans but then he'd wear like you know Japanese designers as well so he kind of yo-yoed between those things but my mum was really really into fashion and she used to she used to like buy me lots of dresses and you know and it's really interesting because now I only wear dresses I don't wear trousers I don't wear jeans or anything like that I wear dresses and I wear skirts so still really girly in terms of my look but my it, it really came from my mom and my mom used to wear lots of Ralph Lauren she used to wear lots of Calvin Klein she used to love Donna Karen you know she loved Armani like she really liked shoulder pads um and I've got a few kind of vintage shoulder pad pieces uh so yeah but that's where it really came from and it, it was really funny because I went to when I remember being at school and if I did really well my mum would take me out and buy me a dress or she'd buy me something. So it kind of incentivized me. It's like, I do really well, then I'm going to get more clothes. <laughs> I love that. I think I still like that now, but I do it to myself. I go, if I get through that really challenging task, I'm going to treat myself and go shopping. Same. Same. It's like, oh, I've got my eye on. I've got my eye on some Parada boots. And I'm thinking, right, if I achieve X, Y, and Z, I'm going to treat myself. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. And so you should. So you should. So what's the oldest thing you've got in your wardrobe? So I have quite a few old things because I used to buy a lot of vintage. Um, I went through a phase of not buying things from the high street because I wanted to wear things that were quite unique. So I used to buy a lot of vintage. So I have quite a few old pieces. But one piece I have is this gold dress. Uh, which I've actually only worn once. I've got that many dresses, Emma. I only literally wear them once or twice. <laughs> so I've got this beautiful dress, which I think it's from the 1940s or the 1950s maybe. And it's just gorgeous. It's got this gold sash, which kind of goes down the dress. And it's obviously has this beautiful gold lace. And then if you can't see it there, but it's kind of pleated and it's, it's just beautiful. So I have this, but I have quite a few. I have another one here, which I wore for my friend's wedding a few years ago. And this one is just stunning. So this is like a green dress and it has these kind of long, and these just kind of float down your back. And it's the most beautiful dress. It's had quite a bit of work done because it's quite old. I think this one is from the 1940s. Um, but yeah, I have loads of kind of really old pieces in my wardrobe. Some I've sold, um, and some I've gifted to friends, but some of them I've kept because like, like this, I wouldn't be able to replace either of these two. So I've kind of held on to them. But yeah, I have quite a few kind of old pieces in my wardrobe. Um, another piece I've got that I absolutely love is a dress I bought about God, it's got to be about 25 years old now. I bought it from Miss Selfridge. I don't know if you remember Miss Selfridge. Mm -hmm. And oh, it's the, the most amazing dress. So I searched, when this dress came out, Emma, I searched for it for months and I couldn't find it. I gave up and I thought, you know what? The dress is sold out. I'm not going to get it. And then one day I was in Miss Selfridge when it was on Market Street and it just happened to be, I just saw this like flash of red 
just shoved into a corner and I pulled it out and it was the dress and I just bought it straight away. And at the time it was, re well, at the time I thought it was really expensive. It was like, I think 49 99 which I know is not a bad amount, but at the time I was like, oh my God, this is a 50 pound dress. And it is the most gorgeous dress. And it's really, it's really good because even though it's a size six, it stretches and it, it can fit up to like a 12. And I've had it ever, I think I've had it, yeah, I've had it for over 25 years. And it has this really beautiful red um, kind of obi belt that kind of goes around the middle. And honestly, it's the best dress. I've had it even re-dyed because the color started to fade. So yeah, this is one of my favorite pieces. And I don't think I'll ever part with it, ever part with this dress. I just, it, I was so happy. I remember the day I found it and I, I just rushed to pay for it. And I just remember being so excited. <laughs> I love that fashion gives us that though, that real yeah. thrill and excitement when you find that perfect piece that you've been hunting down. And the condition and quality of all of those pieces for different reasons is exceptional. So obviously oh, you've got pieces there from the 40s and 50s, which you would yeah. expect had exceptional quality, but to be in immaculate condition by 2024 is exceptional. Yeah. But then the same for the Miss Selfridge piece. It's 20 yeah. years old, but that would have been considered fast fashion. Yeah, so definitely. it's still well loved. It's, you know, still looking great. Yes, you've re-dyed it. But I think that goes to show that if we do care for the pieces in our wardrobe, they will last a lifetime. Yeah, definitely. I mean, for me, I'm really big on sustainability. That's one of the reasons why I love renting out my clothes. Because like I say, I've got, a. I mean, I've definitely got over a thousand dresses easily. <laughs> And I don't wear them all very often. And some of them I can't wear anymore. Um, and I just feel like rather than just, you know, I think I would I would say when I was younger, I was a bit throwaway with my clothes. I assume you know, if I didn't want something anymore, I would just get rid of it. Whereas now it's like, actually, how what what else can I do with it before I kind of get rid of it? And a lot of my pieces, Emma, are not there. They're, a lot of the pieces in my wardrobe are quite old. Like I don't have many dresses that are less than five years old because I tend to hold on to my pieces and because I don't wear them very often they stay in good condition and I maintain everything you know I get things dry cleaned I have a you know I have like my little dry cleaners and seamstresses and tailors that I use for things so I'm really passionate about for me clothes are an investment so it's not just a case of buying something wearing it and throwing it away my my goal is to buy something and hold on to it for a minimum of five years um because I just think it's important and as well I have a few friends who have daughters and some of these pieces when they're older you know I might gift them to them so but yeah for me the whole sustainability thing is really really important and a financial there's a financial element as well I don't want to be frivolous and just buying clothes all the time that's not you know that's not good from a financial point of view but yeah the whole sustainability thing for me is really really important I buy pieces um with the mindset of holding on to them for a minimum of five years and if if I don't think I can hold on to something or it's going to last that length of time then I don't I don't buy it and I love that that's a really accessible way for people to look at sustainability I think often when we talk about sustainable fashion people instantly go right well it's going to be beige and it's going to be you know linen or itchy or it's not going to be super fashionable and actually it's not just about buying from those slow sustainable fashion brands that are making those pieces out of you know the best produced cotton or linen or whatever it is you can still buy from the brands that you love and that you've always really enjoyed you've just got to ensure that a it's going to last you a long time and that b you're basically the guardian of it are you looking after it and keeping it in a condition that's going to mean it lasts a long time yeah, definitely. I think that's really, really important. I think, like you say, it kind of the upkeep and the maintenance of things. And I, I'm really particular about my things. I, I look at, I treat everything like it's a luxury item, even if I only paid like 30 pounds for it. You know, in my mind, you know, I've worked hard for that money. I've invested it in that piece and I should look after it. And I don't I, I just don't want to be just throwing things away I don't I, I'm very very conscious of my of my the footprint I leave in the world and I want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing you know despite my vanity <laughs> I want to make sure I'm being sustainably vain shall we say <laughs> <laughs> but I like that I really like that that's you know it makes it more achievable for people. Yeah. I think sometimes when we see these shining examples of sustainability of these people who, you know, have a jar this big on the kitchen worktop and that's their rubbish from the entire year. I think, but how would I ever manage to do that? And you're just making people feel bad a lot of the times by doing that because it's so extreme. Whereas I think having these realistic 
ways of being sustainable is going to be the way that we are successful in encouraging people to live that more sustainable life. Definitely. I, I don't think it's realistic to say, you know, you, you. I don't think those extreme measures, you know, if you can do that, that's fine. But for me, that doesn't suit my lifestyle. And also it can be quite expensive. Like if you look at some of the more sustainable fashion brands, as amazing as they are, they can, they can be quite expensive. So for me, that's even more incentive to look after the things I've got, because I can't necessarily always afford to spend, you know, a few hundred pounds on one item. That's just not realistic, especially in the current financial climate. So for me, that's even more of an in incentive to look after the things that I already own. Now, what's the piece in your wardrobe you would say gets the most compliments? Um... Well, I wear a lot of bright kind of colorful things. So I get a lot of compliments about a lot of things, but I'd say a dress that I bought probably about two or three years ago is this one, which is an Atsu dress. And it has, it's my favorite color, pink, surprise, surprise. And it has the hugest bow on the front of the dress. And it's a really long dress. You can't really fully appreciate it here, but it's an, it's a floor length gown and it's, it has one strap which is adjustable but it's the pink bow I remember seeing it in the shop on Regent Street and I was like I've got to have this dress I've absolutely got to have it and I wore it for an event last year I haven't worn it since actually um and everyone was like oh my god that dress is amazing your dress even like there were guys who were saying you know obviously I don't wear dresses but your dress looks great and I'm like oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this really is kind of a standout piece. I just I just love the fact that it's my in my favourite colour and there's just this huge pink bow on the front. It's like my absolute favourite piece. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's so fabulous. And I'm a big sucker for a big bow. Give me oh, a the, big bow any day. And the great thing is, is because it's so long, I'm not very tall. So, and as much as I like wearing heels, sometimes I find them a bit of a challenge. And the great thing is because this is so long on me, I can wear flats. And it's like, well, not only is it fabulous, no one knows. but I can be stylish and comfortable, which is just the perfect combination. <laughs> dream, the absolute dream. <laughs> now we've spoke about investing in your wardrobe. Yes. What is the most expensive piece in there that you have? Okay, so the most expensive piece is not actually a dress, it's a handbag. Um, So when I was little, my mom loved Chanel handbags, absolutely loved them. And obviously I fell in love with them too. So when I first started working for Harrods, I decided I was going to save up and I was going to buy myself a bag because you got a discount, but the discount actually wasn't that much on Chanel. And it was, I think it was 2011 when I finally saved up enough, but late in 2011, I finally saved enough to buy it. And it was just, again, it was just the best day. I went down to the store, they kind of made it a whole experience for me. There was actually one of these bags left and um, this lady was going to buy it for her daughter. And honestly, Emma, I thought I was going to cry. I was like, oh, my God, I going to buy it. And then I'm going to have to leave. And then, you know, I, you know, because everybody in the office was waiting for me to come back with this Chanel handbag. I'm like, I can't, like, I need that bag. And then in the end, she says, you know what? It's your first Chanel bag. You should have it. And I was like, oh, thank you. So, yes. Yeah, so in 2011, I acquired this beauty. Oh, now I this beautiful <laughs> piece has been discussed on this podcast so many oh. times. This is at the top of the off the hanger lust list. So many of the guests, when I say to them, what is your dream item? It is this bag. <laughs> And what's even better is, so obviously she, she has a name, she's called Coco, and she has a little sister who is called Coco Sita. And Coco Sita is oh. And what's even better is. It's very nice. nice. on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> but yeah, it was just like, these are my, this handbag is just my favorite, favorite thing in the world. I absolutely love it. And I remember buying it and I remember I took it up to the office and everything just stopped because everyone just wanted to, I unboxed it. Every, even guys, everyone wanted to look at it and take pictures of it. But yeah, this is my, this is my most expensive item and it's my most precious and prized item. And I'm so happy I've got it. <laughs> it's glorious. She is yeah, absolutely she is. glorious. She, she, is beautiful. All she is the very beautiful. She gets. <laughs> all the What's the newest addition you've got in your wardrobe? So interesting. I thought I went when I saw this question, I was quite excited by it because I've um I decided at the beginning of the year, and if you heard of Tiffany Dark, she's this amazing lady in fashion who's really focused on sustainability. And she launched this initiative, I think it was last year, or it might have been the year before, um, about buying a minimum of five pieces a year. 
So I decided at the beginning of this year, because I ha already have a whole host of clothes in my house, I wasn't going to buy or buy too much more. So I decided to do this rule of five. So, so far, I'm really proud of myself. I've only bought two pre-loved items, which I have here. Um, and they're two dresses, surprise, surprise. Um, one of them is like a striped kind of just best dress, which is from St. Michael, which a lot of people won't know. That's the old Marks and Spencer. Old m and so, yeah. Yeah, so that's, um, I think that was £16 I paid for that. And it's quite long. Um, it's quite summery, although we've not had quite the weather to work for me to oh, wear it. I don't know what's going on this year. <laughs> Oh, don't even get me started. And then this is another dress I purchased earlier this year. Again, it was like a, a charity shop find. And it's kind of a three quarter length dress, um, sleeveless. And this was like £12. So, so far this year, these are my items. And I've I've spent £28, which for me is an absolute miracle. Because normally by this time, I've, I've bought like 50 pairs of shoes, 100 dresses, you know, belts. All, I've bought all sorts. Um, So, yeah, I've literally only bought two items this year. And, and these are those items. And yeah, I've literally spent less than £30 on them. So I'm really, really proud of myself. <laughs> that is exceptional. I am gobsmacked. Are you coping though? Is it stressful? Is it like traumatic? Do you miss it? Are you Do you have the itch and the urge to want to buy things? And then you stop yourself and go, no, I am not doing that. Or have you just kind of accepted that that's what's going to happen? Well, the, the, the beauty of it is, Emma, actually, if I do ever feel, you know, the need to go shopping I can just go shopping in my spare room because I've got <laughs> I've just got I literally have racks of clothes so it's like if I feel like I feel the need to buy something I'll just go into my spare bedroom and try stuff on and take some selfies and look in the mirror and then I and then that's kind of that's that that itch has been scratched so no I don't really feel like that. I mean I do have the occasional thing oh I I won't mind buying another handbag, but then I just think, well, I've already got the handbag I've always wanted, so I can't really, I don't really need to buy another bag. But yeah, I literally, if I feel, if I ever get those moments, I just literally go shopping in my own wardrobe and just try a load of stuff on. Oh, more of us should do that, definitely. <laughs> now, are you quite sentimental about the pieces in your wardrobe? You have a huge collection and you don't seem to throw anything away, but is there possibly a most sentimental piece? I think... But it's kind of strange because I am attached to some pieces, but I'm not attached to others as much as I love clothes. You know, I have to, I always remember, I always say to myself, you know, they are only things at the end of the day. But I think if there was one piece that I'm really attached to, it would be this, I guess, surprise, surprise. It's another pink dress. Um, It's a dress I wore for my sister's wedding. My sister got married in 2020, literally weeks before we went into lockdown. And I bought this pinko dress, especially for the wedding. And I wore it with the most fabulous pair of Jimmy Choo shoes, um, pink as well, obviously. So I think this is a dress that I'm really attached to. And I, I've actually rented this dress out. And the really nice thing was the lady who rented it from me wore it for her civil ceremony and her sister, her, her name was Louise and my sister's name is Louise. Aww. So it's just it just gives it that more kind of, I just love it that bit more. But yeah, this is probably my kind of most treasured piece in terms of the dresses, the, the actual clothes that I own, just because I, like I say, I wore it for my sister's wedding and it's just, yeah, it just is, has a very special place in my heart and it's in my favorite color. So can't go wrong. <laughs> so lovely. And I love that idea that our clothes bring us so much joy for us personally, but the idea of renting your clothes out, I also am a big fan of renting out my wardrobe and it, it's the joy that then somebody else gets from yeah. wearing your clothes. I rented out a pair of boots recently for somebody's birthday and she sent me a message afterwards going, oh my God, I felt amazing in them. They looked amazing. I got so many compliments and I was just like warmed by the joy that she felt no, wearing no, my boots. That's so <laughs> nice. It's like one lady, she loved the dress so much. When she sent it back to me, she sent me a little card, a really nice card, and with with her mobile number, she said, "If you ever decide to sell it, just just call me, call me straight away." <laughs> <laughs> but it's just so nice, like you're saying. There was one lady who rented a dress from me who um had had a baby, and she kind of just wanted to feel. She was she rented a few dresses for herself because she kind of wanted to wear something glamorous because she hadn't felt she'd been able to do that for quite a number of months, and it's just really nice that my clothes get to be part of other people's lives and help them create memories and like for themselves. I had another lady who rented a dress for her engagement party. Um, another lady who rented a dress for her, uh, 
grandparents I think it was their 65th wedding anniversary or something like that and I'm just like that's so nice I really really love that my clothes get to be part of other people's journeys and other people's stories as well so lovely what is the piece in your wardrobe you would say most sums you up is it pink it has got elements of pink, but I would <laughs> say it's probably it's probably what my Rixo dress is because I think they're very me. They're very colourful. They're very fun. Um, you know, outside of work, I don't take myself too seriously. And I would say it's probably the dresses that I say would uh, would say are me through and through are, is are stuff like this. Like this has just got it's just got sequins, like colourful sequins right down to the bottom. And I've actually got three of these kind of Rixo dresses, not the same ones. But I would say that if there was a dress in my wardrobe that I would say is the equivalent of me, I would say it would be one of these Rixo dresses because it's just it's bright, it's colourful, it's fun, you know, it's just like it's kind it doesn't take itself too seriously. And I just think, yeah, I think if anything, it it'll definitely be one of these dresses although I think most of my dresses are very me because they're all very bright colorful quite fun normally quite long and poofy because I like to wear I like like a, a massive big skirt with sometimes a petticoat underneath but yeah I would say it's probably these because then they're very disco-y as well I could go out dancing in this and I love dancing so <laughs> oh, fabulous I love a Rixo dress I love a, <laughs> a bit of sparkle just gorgeous absolutely gorgeous now, would you like to join my club of disasters? Do you have a fashion faux pas or a wardrobe malfunction that you would like to share to gain you entry into my club? So there's only one that I can remember. And fortunately, I, I never repeated it. And I, I can remember there was one stage many, many years ago. I did used to wear trousers and I did used to wear jeans. And there was this one particular, out, I don't know why, but I decided I was going to wear denim on denim. Now, sometimes that can work, but this particular outfit was, and I'm glad I've got no pictures of it because I'd just be mortified. Uh, but this outfit was awful. It was like a really boxy denim jacket. And I think individually the pieces were quite cool, but for some reason I decided to wear them together. And I'm quite small, so I'm quite short. And those kind of boxy looks, I, I can't really pull off. I like the idea of it, but I can't really pull them off. I don't think because I'm not the right shape for it. And I just looked terrible, Emma. I, I caught with myself as I was walking out the train station. And I, I actually went and bought a dress to change into the car. I could not look at the jeans looking and it was quite an expensive outfit. It wasn't a cheap outfit, but I was just like, I'm not walking around like this. Literally, my, just my vanity will not allow it. And I literally <laughs> ran into my I think it was mango and I just bought this dress and I, and, I, and I bought some sandals and I thought, right, I feel a lot better now. But yeah, it was like a denim, it was almost like a denim suit and it was, it was just awful. <laughs> oh, you see, I do like the Canadian tuxedo vibes, but it's got to be the right cut to of get course. that right. It's got to be the right cut. Now, what are your favorite shoes? So I um I love Manolos and I love Sex and the City. I love Carrie Bradshaw and these shoes again. It took me a while to get them, but I I have the Manolo Hangizis. Beautiful and in that color, glorious. What a beautiful but thing! Those are my but these are my absolute favorite shoes. Um they're just absolutely gorgeous I don't wear them very often because they're very very precious but yeah these are my I've got lots of shoes but this is my favorite pair by far I think out after these probably my air force ones because I love trainers as well but yeah these are just yeah they're just beautiful and I'm so happy I've got them oh the ultimate classic pair of heels you know <laughs> Carrie Bradshaw would would approve she would salute you now, yeah. is there a piece of fashion that you are lusting after, what would you like to add to our off the hanger lust list? I think for me, it's the, it, it, there's actually two. So I would like a classic Chanel tweed jacket, but in black, because right. I think it would go with everything. But I also, I've also got my eye on, you know, the classic Balmain leather jackets that, that are just exquisite. One of those in black leather. And that there were, those are the two things I want. But I think if I had to choose one, I'd probably go with the Chanel jacket because it's just such a classic. But I'd want a vintage one. I wouldn't want one that you could, you know, off the off the hanger today. I want to source a vintage one from maybe I don't know the fifties or something like that. But yeah, that would be my ultimate piece that I I that still eludes me at the moment. But I will get one one day. <laughs> and I love that that would just integrate itself beautifully into your wardrobe because everything else is so bright and colorful and bold. Yeah. To have that really classic piece that you can just throw on over the top of any one of them is just 
very chic. I'm here for it. Now, yeah, piece, is there a piece of fashion advice that you would have given to your younger self? Um, I think the fashion advice I would give to my younger self is just to, I think the most stylish thing that you can be is just yourself and just kind of embrace who you are. And I know it sounds cheesy and I'm sure many people have said it, but I think that one of the things I love about getting older is that I'm really kind of growing and, you know, continue to really grow into my own skin. I don't feel anywhere near as self-conscious as I did when I was younger. You know, I wear what I like and I don't really care what anyone thinks. And I think if I could if I could like meet my younger self, I would encourage her to just kind of be herself and just wear what she wants and just kind of enjoy being in her own skin. Cause I think we don't appreciate our youth until we're older. And yeah, that's what I would say is just kind of the coolest thing. The most stylish thing you can be is just to be yourself and just enjoy it and just enjoy your clothes. That is gorgeous advice to finish on. Thank you so much. I have absolutely loved looking through all of your wardrobe. And one day I want an invite round to your spare room to come and have a rummage in your uh, beautiful <laughs> red dresses. <laughs> you're, very, you're very welcome. You're very welcome to come and have a rummage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Emma. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please remember to share this episode with a friend. Oh, 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 oh,